All right, finding complex solutions of polynomial equations. Sit back, relax. Lots of different examples on this lesson, so be patient and let's get through it. Um, your direction is going to say find all zeros of functions, and it says including multiplicities. Now, we haven't talked about that word before. Uh, multiplicities means if answers occur more than one time, it's called multiplicity. Multiplicity 1, multiplicity 2, or 3. And I'll show you what that's talking about right here. Uh, to solve this and find the zeros, I'm going to factor it. That's the method number one anytime you can. And this one you can take out an x squared. And that leaves an x plus 7. Plus p of x. And once it's factored, you can tell what the zeros are. Um, negative 7 will make the parentheses 0, so that's one of your zeros. The other zero is 0, but because it is squared, because that x is squared, um, it's, it's called 0 with multiplicity 2. I'm going to abbreviate that and put mult 2. Um, negative 7, 0 has multiplicity 2. If it had been x cubed with multiplicity 3, x fourth, multiplicity 4. Um, final zeros again, include multiplicity again. Um, this one we're going to factor again. Anytime you can factor, it's the way to go. It's so much quicker than the other ways. Those are cubes. We've factored cubes before. We go small parentheses, big parentheses. Take the cube root of each term. Square the first one. Multiply them together and change the sign. And square the second one. Done that before. Now, I know right now one of my zeros from right here is going to be positive 4. And I told you the other day when we did the uh, cube factoring that that part, the other factor right here, the other big quadratic factor, will not factor anymore, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to solve that part of it using the quadratic formula. So I'm going to go x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, which is just 2. And let's just work on that a little bit. If I work out the part inside the radical, it's going to be um, negative 48 all over 2a, which is 2. I'm going to keep going. Uh, negative 48, you can break down, 48 you can break down 16 times 3, and it's going to have an i because it's negative in there, so it's going to be negative 48 plus or minus, the square root of 16 is 4, i on 3, all over 2, and then finally what you need to do, because they all have 2's, you need to reduce that one, take a 2 out, so you get this answer right here, you get negative 2 plus or minus 2i on 3, and then don't forget your other 0 from way up here, because we have that x minus 4, that's just 4. So those are your three zeros. One thing I haven't said yet that I said, did say one other time during my school year so far is whatever your degree is, whatever your exponent is, that's how many answers or how many zeros you should get to your function. All right, that's a pretty good one. To be honest, I'm going to show you a shortcut in class tomorrow for that type of problem. Um, you may want to remind me. It's a great shortcut, but you got to really get it. All right, this one's kind of hard to see. So let's find all the zeros again. It's like it's foggy. Um, and it's got four terms in it. Remember, the only way to factor four terms is by grouping, but the first thing I notice is they all have an x. So before I try to factor by grouping, I'm going to take an x out of all of them, like this, and it will leave x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 12. And then I'm going to try to factor by grouping what's inside the parentheses. So um, if I take these first two terms, if I take out an x squared, they will leave x plus 3. So I'm really trying to get an x plus 3 again. So I'm going to take out a negative 4. And if I do that, that leaves x plus 3, which is what I was hoping. All right, so here's what I've got now. This is going to be a big factoring problem. Um, because x plus 3 is up there twice, I'm going to factor out the x plus 3. This is just factor by grouping like we've done before. That leaves an x squared minus 4. And here's where you've got to be clever a little bit. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. So you can keep factoring some more. You can go x plus 3, and x squared minus 4 is really x plus 2, x minus 2. Wow. So now you can list all your zeros. Remember when we started, it was x to the fourth power, which means I'm looking for four zeros. So my four zeros are 0, they came from there, negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. And that's all four of them. That's a pretty good problem. Lots of factoring so far. Okay, find all the zeros here. I'm going to include multiplicities greater than 1. This is kind of foggy looking too. I'm not sure what happened with the pictures here. X to the fourth, uh, which means I'm looking for four answers. There are difference of squares here because X to the fourth has a square root and 16 has a square root. So I'm going to break it down like this. X to the fourth, the square root would be X squared. The square root of 16 is 4. X squared plus 4. X squared minus 4. Now one thing I notice is X squared minus 4, this part right here, is a difference of squares. X squared plus 4 is not 
because it's a plus. It's not a difference of squares, it's addition of squares. So if I, if I break down x squared minus 4, I get x plus 2, x minus 2. So I know two of my zeros right now are going to be positive 2 and negative 2. But I have this factor here left, and it won't factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down here and solve it. x squared plus 4 equals 0. And I'm going to use square root. I'm just going to take the 4 to the other side. And then I'm going to take the square root of each side, like this. If you square root negative 4, it's negative, so you've got to take out an i. And you would get plus or minus, don't forget, and you get plus or minus 2i. And those are the two answers that come from here, but don't forget your other two from, from over here. So my, all my zeros would be, well, I guess I could write like this, plus or minus 2, that comes from here, and then my plus or minus 2i. And those are my four answers. So you can use imaginary today. Complex numbers are fine. All right, another one here. Find all the zeros of this big polynomial. Still include multiplicities, it says. Um, this is x to the fourth, so I know I'm looking for four answers. The, the problem with this one is that there are five terms, which means I don't know how to factor that at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what we did yesterday and just make a list of possibilities and see if I can find one on my calculator that would work. Um, good news, there's one right there in the front, and my last, factor, my last uh, term is negative 8. So I'm going to make a list here of factors of 8. 1, 2, 4, and 8. Punch those in my calculator and see which one looks like it works. And it looks like negative 2 does. So I'm going to try that in the box to make sure. 1, 3, that's a 5, sorry. 1, 5, 6, negative 4, negative 8. And I'm hoping I get a 0 at the end. 1 times negative 2, add those up. That's negative 6. That's 0. Perfect. That's 8. So now I have this, I have the 1, the 3, the 0, and the negative 4. So what I'm going to try now is uh, keep on going with that and see if I can find one more that would work in my list. Um, hmm. Let's try... Um, okay, let's try, let's see, look at my calculator again. Let's try 1. Bring the 1 down, 1 times 1 is 1, that's 4, 1 times 4 is 4, that's 4, 1 times 4 is 4, there we go. So, so far I have two solutions, or two zeros, I've got negative 2 and positive 1, and now what I've done is I've broken this down to a quadratic. Remember we started with x to the 4th, that was an x cubed when I got there, that represents x squared. So what I have is x squared plus 4x plus 4. So what I'm going to do to speed things up is I'm going to try to factor that and see if I can get my last two zeros by doing that. So I'm thinking, what are factors of 4 that add up, to, add up to be 4 in the middle? And obviously it's 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. So what I have here, I have x plus 2, x plus 2. Don't forget the zeros up here. And here are all my zeros for this function. Uh, negative 2. Well, I'll be right the 1 first. 1. Then I got negative 2 up here. And I also got it down here two more times. So I'm going to put negative 2 has a multiplicity of 3, which means it occurred 3 times out of my 4 answers four zeros, three of them are negative two. Here's the fundamental theorem of algebra, and this is in your workbook, but I want to make sure I showed it to you. Every polynomial that has degree at least one has at least one zero, and it may be a complex number. Uh, corollary, it says, whatever the degree is, it has exactly n zeros, including multiplicities, which means if one repeats, that's okay, but it has that many zeros, whatever the degree is. All right, here's one more. Uh, solve the problem by finding all the roots. Now, again, this has got four terms, so anytime I see four, I'm thinking of grouping. It's a cubic equation, so I know I'm getting three answers. Another thing I notice is everything's even. So I'm going to divide both sides by two, which means everything gets a two taken out. So this becomes 1x cubed minus 6x squared minus 17x plus 102. That helps a little bit. And I'm going to try to group them. If that doesn't work, I have to make a list again and try on my calculator and see what happens. But what I'm seeing here is the first two terms have an x squared in common, and that leaves x minus 6. And I'm going to take my calculator and punch in 102 divided by 17 and just hope it goes in there six times, and it does. So I'm going to factor out. Because I need a minus 6, I'm going to factor out a minus 17, and that leaves x minus 6 right there. And that's grouping. Perfect. Because I have x minus 6 both places, that's my GCF. I'm going to pull it out. And what that leaves me with is an x squared minus 17 equals 0. So one of my zeros is 6. The other two are going to come from here. So I'm going to pull that over here to the side. 
x squared minus 17 equals 0. I'm going to solve that. Moving the 17 over, it becomes positive 17. Take the square root of both sides, and don't forget your little plus or minus, but you can't, and you can't break down 17, it just stays in there. So my zeros are 6 and plus or minus the square root of 17, and that's it. And there's my three zeros. That one is bad as I thought, but you did have, anytime you see four terms, think grouping first and see if it'll work. And also, don't forget you can reduce equations as you go or reduce functions. All right, let's try this one. This one's just three terms, and it looks like a trinomial, so I'm going to try to factor it also. It's quadratic form because the middle exponents have to first. So I'm going to try this method. I'm going to try to get two parentheses here. I have to have an x squared and x squared because I have x to the fourth at the beginning. So I'm trying to fa think of factors of 27 that would give me negative 6. And what comes to mind is this, a negative 9 and a positive 3. Now the factor right here is a difference of squares. So I can break that down some more. I can go x plus 3, x minus 3. And I know that's, that's going to produce two of my zeros, but I still have this x squared plus 3 equals 0. So to solve this, I, to get all four answers, well, I know, first of all, one of them is negative 3, one's positive 3. Those two came from here. I'm going to bring this x squared plus 3 because it's a sum of squares, which means I can't factor over here to the side to solve it. I'm going to bring the 3 over. It becomes negative 3. Take the square root. If you take the square root of both sides, uh, you get plus or minus. Don't forget your i. And you can't break down 3, so you're just kind of stuck with it. And that's two answers. That's the other two. So really, you know, if you wanted to write it this way, you would get plus or minus 3 and also plus or minus i on 3. If you haven't noticed yet, every time we get an i, it's plus or minus. They're always, they always come in conjugates. We've talked about that word before. I don't even know if that's on this slide. The first one, irrational root theorem, says uh, if a polynomial has roots a plus b on c, then another root has to be a minus b on c. You always get conjugates, always. And if you get, if there, if you get imaginary numbers, if a plus bi works, a minus bi always works. All right, so anytime you get answers to polynomials with radicals or with i's, they will always come in conjugates. All right. Now they're going to have you go backwards. We'll do a couple of these and we'll be done. Write the polynomial function of the least degree and the new coefficient of 1 that has the given zeros. They're giving you the zeros. Now, if 5 is a 0, that's awesome. But if 3 plus 2 on 7 is a 0, don't forget what that means. That also means 3 minus 2 on 7 is a 0. You're going to absolutely not like this problem very much. But this is what you have to do. You have to write the function, which means you've got to, write, you've got to go backwards. 5 is an answer because it came from here. It came from the factor x minus 5. Um, 3 plus 2 on 7 came from here. As ugly as that is. Um, 3 minus 2 on 7 came from here. And if that was all you had to do, that would be no big deal. We'd, just, we'd be finished right there and say, there, there it is. But what you got to do is you have to multiply all that out. So I'm going to leave this x minus 5 here for a minute and work on these other two. Watch what I do right here. There's a minus sign right here, right here, and also right here. And what that's going to do, that's going to change all the signs inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write x minus 3 minus 2 on 7, and also x minus 3 plus 2 on 7. Now, I tried to make a big deal about what I just said, but I just said conjugates. Okay, I get x minus 3, x minus 3. Minus 2 on 7, plus 2 on 7. And don't forget the shortcut. When you multiply conjugates, you can just do foo. You can just do fl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first, which is the x minus 3 part. x minus 3 times x minus 3 is x minus 3 squared. That's supposed to be a square. Sorry about that. That was the worst square ever. Squared. Minus. That's minus because I'm multiplying these two. Now the last. Ooh. All right. I've got a minus 2 on 7 times a positive 2 on 7. If you multiply those two, 2 times 2 is 4. And if you multiply the square root of 7, you get 7. So 4 times 7 is 28. Let me go up here to the side. Here's what I just did. I did 2 on 7 times 2 on 7. And when I did that, 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. So 4 times 7 is 28. That's what just happened. Keep on going. This is, from, I hope I can fit it on this slide. Um, if I square the x minus 3, I get this. x squared minus 6x plus 9, remember, square, multiply double square. And then I got a minus 28 still. 
could not. So, still have the x minus 5. Um, inside I have x squared minus 6x. And if you add the 9 and the negative 28, that's negative 19. And what you have to do is you're going to have to take this x all the way through, then take the negative 5 all the way through. So here I go. When I take the x through, x times x squared is x cubed. x times 6x is negative 6x squared, and then negative 19x. Now I'm taking the negative 5 through. Negative 5x squared plus 30x plus 95. And it still equals f of x. One more step, believe it or not, I got it. I'm just going to combine things that I can. x cubed, there's only one x cubed up there. I'm good at combining those two. That's negative 11x squared. I have these two. That's going to be positive 11x and then the 95. And that's all you have to do on that one problem. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Um, it's not, again, it's not extremely difficult, but it's long and tedious and you got to hang in there. Let me show you one more with an I in it, and I promise the video is over. Okay, one more here. Now I have these answers. i got 2 and 3, and because 1 minus I is an answer, it means 1 plus I is an answer. So here we go again. Set them up. 2 came from here, x minus 2. 3 came from here, x minus 3. The 1 minus I came from x minus 1 minus I. The 1 plus I came from x minus 1 plus I. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and do FOIL here and make that just one parenthesis. If you do FOIL, you'll get x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now my other two, I have minus sign. That, the same minus sign. This minus sign right here, this minus sign right there is going to change the signs in there. So I'm going to take a step and do that. x minus 1 plus i and x minus 1 minus i. All right, um, I still have this x squared minus 5x plus 6 sitting out here waiting. And what I have inside again is I have conjugates. I got x minus 1, x minus 1. Positive i, negative i. So I got x minus 1 plus i, x minus 1 minus i. Those are conjugates. And because they're conjugates, I'm going to do foo. I'm going to do the first, which is first times first. And I'm going to do last times last, which is minus i squared. So this is still sitting here waiting. And inside, if I square the x minus 1, I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. I squared, remember, is really negative 1, so that really says minus negative 1, which is plus 1. So out here, I've got x squared minus 5x plus 6. In here, x squared minus 2x, and because I have a 1 plus 1, it's a plus 2. So, two more lines, guys. I've got to take the x squared right here all the way through the negative 5x all the way through, and then the 6 all the way through. And there's going to be about 100 terms down here, but we can we got this. If I take the x squared through, I get x to the 4th minus 2x cubed plus 2x squared. Now I'm going to take the 5x through. Negative 5x cubed, sorry about that, minus 10x squared, minus 10x. Now I'm going to take the 6 through. 6x squared minus 12x plus 12. And now I'm just looking for stuff I have in common. x to the fourth, this is by itself. There's an x cubed, there's an x cubed. That makes negative 7x cubed. There's an x squared, there's an x squared, there's an x squared. 2 minus 10 is negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2x squared. Then I have a negative 10x, a negative 12x, that's minus 22x. And then I got a plus 12 equals f of x. And that's it, finally. Um... Again, sorry about those, but again, not extremely hard math-wise. The hardest thing math-wise is getting all the way through that and not making a mistake and just being very careful. Very tedious, though. So we're working on those in class tomorrow. It's a big day. I mean, it's just a long lesson, so come ready to work, and I'll see you in there tomorrow. We'll get through it. See ya.